Welcome to the Microbiome Report. I'm your host, Andrea Ween, and today we have a very special member of the biome family joining us in the studio. My guest is Eve Guzman, a biome ambassador and the founder of G Transformation Fitness, where she coaches people on how to count macros and reach their weight loss goals. Eve launched her career after appearing in People magazine for losing half her body weight through diet and lifestyle. She went from 277 pounds down to 138, and at her peak, when she was competing, down to 125. On this episode, we talk about how her gut health fluctuated when she dropped the pounds and started competing in bodybuilding competitions. Interestingly, her microbiome shifted for the worse when she became too thin. We talk about it all, including combing through her most recent gut report, And we talk about why she's on a mission to tell the world about the power of pre and probiotics. Let's get to it. Eve, thank you so much for coming on the show and joining us in the studio today. No problem. I'm excited to be here. So let's start with just your story because you told it to me off air. It's so impressive and so inspirational. So let's head back to the darker days when you were a little bit bigger and you started thinking, you know, I got to drop this weight. Okay, cool. So it wasn't a little bit bigger. (laughs) It was a lot of bigger. So um, my highest weight was 277 pounds. So I was almost 300 pounds, 5'1", and about a size 24. And I got to the point where I was just plain fed up of being fat. Like, there's no way to really be nice about it and, like, you know, (laughs) make it sound sweet. But um, I was really to the point where I was, like, miserable and I was depressed. And the turning point for me was when I got to the point where I had two pairs of jeans. And I was rotating them, you know, in and out. I would wear one and then I would wash the other pair while those were being washed, you know, back and forth. And I was burning holes into them because my thighs were so big. And so I was like, okay, got to get some new clothes. I was in college. I was like, let me go and try to find some jeans that fit. And I couldn't find anything. Um, And that was like the point of, you know, turning for me because I went through about 20 pairs of jeans in that dressing room. And I realized I had to do something. So that's like the darkest, you know, the lowest point was being almost 300 pounds and I can't find a pair of jeans, you know. So um, that's when I realized that a lot of my obesity was coming from not moving enough and needing to eat better and eat less. Um, Some nights I was eating two or three bowls of spaghetti. So you would make this huge pot of spaghetti and it's there. I would eat it at five o'clock and 6.30, I'm like, it's still there. I'll eat some more. 8 o'clock, go back, eat some more. So things changed for me when I really started analyzing what I was eating and I started tracking everything I was eating. Um, I started eating less and then I started eating more nutritious foods and then moving more. I started off with a jump rope and a Tybo video and I would work out in my kitchen because I'm short and I could still jump rope in the house. That's how it went from, you know, the dark to the light. And when you were going through that initial process of getting involved in eating better, starting to move your body more, what were your resources? Were you just doing this all, you know, you're like, I've heard that this is working, this could work. What was your guiding light? So um, my guiding light was me. You know, my background in science, I got my, you know, bachelor's in biology and I had a focus um, in molecular biology. And I'm like, I'm a smart girl. I can figure this out. You know, calories in, calories out, basic nutrition. So I was using um, a little nutrition book that had like all the calories. It was Calorie King. And I would look up every single thing I was eating and I would manually add up all the protein, the carbs, the fats, the calories, everything. And I figured out how many calories a day I should be eating, what a deficit should be for me. And that's how I got to where I was using, you know, this basic stuff I had learned getting my degree to lose weight. So that the internet, which was not, you know, (laughs) as resourceful as it is now, but it was basically going solo. And at that point, how was your gut health? 
Oh, I don't know. <laughs> it was pretty bad. I mean, I went from eating um, two McDonald's cheeseburgers every day, 99 cents a piece, um, and then a value-sized French fry every day. I mean, I had a lot of, like, oily foods. I wasn't getting much vegetables. The only thing I was eating vegetable-wise at that point was, like, potatoes and corn. No leafy greens, complex carbs, nothing was high fiber. I remember being bloated all of the time, you know, besides the fact that I was overweight. But I remember having indigestion, heartburn, like I just felt oily. (laughs) And I think, too, even though maybe you weren't having as many digestive symptoms, the depression, feeling down, all of that now we're starting to learn is so tied to what's going on in our gut, that gut brain axis and that connection that we have. So your symptoms, even though maybe they weren't completely digestive at that point, you were exhibiting symptoms of imbalance in the microbiome for sure. Yes, definitely. So you drop about 60 pounds, you Mm -hmm. see People Magazine cover and Mm -hmm. you think... That's me. I'm going to go. I'm going for it. I was like, why not? I'm like, these people are on the front of these magazines. They're losing all this weight naturally. And I'm like, I've lost some weight. Like, I think I can do this. So I would see them on like the end cap getting groceries. And I told my husband, I'm going to be in that magazine. I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to be in there. And that was about 2011. And I'm like, I can do this. I can get into this magazine. That's my future. Do you think if you wouldn't have had that goal, you would have still had that drive and that fire inside of you to keep going with the weight loss? I don't know. I don't think so. I think that was like another turning moment where I pretty much said, why not me? That was where I kind of went from, oh, I just want to get down to 200 pounds, get to 190 and feel normal and feel average to these people have this amazing life. They've done this, you know, amazing journey on their own. Why not me? So that kind of like tipped me over the edge to go from like this average weight loss goal to something major. And did you say, okay, I'm going to call People Magazine. I'm going to tell them what I'm up to. We're just going to get myself in this magazine and that's it. How did that work out? (laughs) I wish. I think that's what people think happened. Um, But actually, I started documenting my journey on Instagram, showing everything that I was eating, all the changes in food, um, me exercising. And then I was hashtagging every photo, half my size, like repeatedly over and over again. And I was tagging them in every single photo. So that was kind of my way of, you know, holding myself accountable, but saying, hey, people, here I am. (laughs) Please see me. And so when was that turning point where they finally did see you? So in um, April 2014, I finally hit the half my size point. I had like this, you know, private victory at home, like, oh my God, I made it. You know, I got down to um, about a size eight. I had lost 138 pounds and nothing really changed. Like I just kept using the hashtag. And then one day they emailed me out of the blue and they're like, hey, we've been watching you all year. We see that you've lost all this weight and we would really love to interview you and have you in our half their size issue. That's so exciting and such a momentous occasion to finally be recognized for something that you'd been working on so hard. You know, it sounds like, okay, I just did it and I went with it and it was <laughs> sounds right. So easy. So for someone who might be listening to this and thinking I'm at that breaking point, I need to do something. What can you tell them to keep them motivated, but also a little bit about the slip ups that I'm sure you had along the way? So a lot of people, you know, they just think about where they're at and how upset they are and where, you know, they want to be. But you really have to look at where you are to see the changes that you need to make, you know, one by one to get there. So for someone just starting out, I would tell them to look at their food, start looking at how much you're actually eating, what's your caloric intake, what are you eating for protein, carbs, and fat each day, but like look at where you're at instead of hiding from it and take on one thing at a time and, you know, focus on progress over perfection as you're trying to get to that goal. And then always remember, like, when you hit that breaking point, you start off with motivation. You're, like, so hyped to get to the gym on Monday. You meal prep on Sunday. You're, like, so excited. You're going to make all these changes. 
And then Wednesday rolls around and you run out of steam. And you have to remember that motivation gets you started, but it's really the dedication that's going to get you to the goal. So that means you have to get started with the motivation, but you have to do the things that you're supposed to do when you don't want to do it. And that will happen. No one has this, you know, beautiful journey that every day they're motivated and they want to get up at 430 to hit the gym at five. You have to keep doing the things that you should be doing when you don't want to do them. You also mentioned now in your work with clients, you see a lot of women who come to you and are either low carb, incredibly low carb or no carb because they've maybe read on somewhere that they should cut carbs. That's how you lose weight. And for the gut microbiome, that can be detrimental. So obviously we don't want people out there eating croissants and pizza and these, you know, very starchy, refined carbohydrates, but carbohydrates are a necessary part of gut health and of overall health. So what is your advice when someone comes to you and they're eating that way and you really need to kind of dial in their macros? For someone like that, which a lot of those types of clients that come to me typically are experiencing gut health issues, um, I would definitely have them focus on adding complex carbohydrates into their diet, even if it's very, very slowly. Because if you're on a diet where you are not eating carbs or you're completely restricting, you're not getting any prebiotics in there, you're not getting any fiber, you're having slower digestion because there's nothing bulky in your gut to actually get things through. And I don't mean like just a fiber supplement or a pill. I mean like real food and real complex carbs. So I would have those women start to add the carbs in slowly, even if it's just two half cup servings every day, you know, going from nothing to that. That is exactly what I do for my clients when I'm looking at their macronutrient profile. You had the same issue when you started cutting weight because you got into bodybuilding after all of this. So during this process, People Magazine comes to you, you're in the magazine, you're blogging for them, Mm -hmm. you've made this radical transformation, you've moved out of the biology lab, and you have this whole new life, and you think, I can really start competing at a higher level, and you go low carb to cut. So tell us a little bit about what happened to your own gut health. It was definitely unexpected for me. You know, the goal to get on stage is to get lean. If you're a figure competitor, it's like, okay, get down to 10 to 12% body fat. And what happens is you've got to cut calories all over, but you take a major hit when you have to cut both carbs and fat. And what happened for me and a lot of competitors, I started experiencing just a boatload of gut issues. And that ranged from indigestion, bloating, abdominal discomfort, having aversions to foods that I never had issues with when I went low carb. And I mean like extremely low carb just to get lean enough for the stage. So when did you start to realize, because this isn't something that a lot of bodybuilders talk about, these digestive issues that they're having. And you even said you felt like you were all by yourself. Mm -hmm. So when did it start to be something that you became more vocal about or realized that other people were struggling with? So I really started noticing it when I was about four weeks out from my last competition. And I'm like, man, I'm not able to go to the bathroom. And how am I going to look lean and have this flat stomach and abs if I can't even go to the bathroom? So I started searching online Instagram hashtags to see if other competitors were talking about it. And there weren't very many competitors talking about it. But my friend Alex was. And I started listening to what, you know, she was saying and what she was going through. And all I could think was me, too. Like, that is me. And then other people started talking about it. It. And then I got on Instagram stories and I started talking about it. And then, you know, people were hitting me up in my inbox and they're like, man, I'm on my third year of competitions. No one talks about this. I can't believe you guys are finally saying that you can't go number two. And then at this around the same time, you had your gut report done yes. here at Biome. And we actually have those results. So we're going to yep. just look at them and uh, kind of dissect what was going on in your gut and why you may have had some of these issues going on. And then also some of the recommendations that were made that transformed your gut health. So really, when we look at this report, we're seeing a couple of different bacteria and bacterial phylum. So Bacteroides and Firmicutes are two of the most common strains that we see in gut bacteria. And in a, in a traditional, normal gut, we have about 75% Bacteroides, probably about 20% of Firmicutes, and then there's a mix of some other bacterias. And 
proteobacteria is one of the ones that's in that smaller range of the slivered mix. And proteobacteria is normal in a healthy gut, but we do see it often in much higher proportions when someone is having gut issues. So it can be a very pathogenic strain. And for you, all three, Bacteroides, Firmicutes, and Proteobacteria, were pretty even. So we're having way higher percentage of proteobacteria than we would like to see in a normal gut. And that could contribute to many of those issues that you Mm -hmm. were having. So tell us a little bit about what you did when you got these results to really dial it in because you were already very aware of macros. Mm -hmm. You knew what was going on in terms of how to fuel your body, but how to fuel your microbiome was a little bit different. So with the food choices that I was making, um, I ended up taking a lot of the things out that were triggers for me. So I'm lactose intolerant. I shouldn't be eating ice cream, (laughs) but I started eating less of it. I started eating less of milk and creamer. I removed corn from my diet. Um, I was looking for more gluten-free options when it came to a lot of the carb choices that I was having. And then I dropped the amount of soy that I was consuming um, drastically. I also went back to adding a collagen supplement into my diet and adding more fermented foods in because those were things that I knew that had worked a little bit better for me in the past, and I started adding those things back in. Ginger and turmeric, I added those back in. My husband and I got into a ritual where we were actually slicing it up, boiling it, putting it in large mason jars, and adding it to tea each morning. Ruining everything in your yeah. kitchen with the orange color, your <laughs> fingers. You were like, Everyone's know, like, oh, yeah. she's been cutting too. <laughs> yeah, but it's great to reduce inflammation and not only for your gut, but also like for your joints. If you're a runner, you're lifting weights and you're sore. Um, and then I started cutting out a lot of artificial sweeteners. Um, so the biggest things that really get to me are the artificial sweeteners and protein bars. And if you're listening to this, you may understand. But a lot of those sweeteners can constipate you, cause a lot of bulking in your gut. And when you're trying to eat those for convenience and not eating whole food, Foods, it really holds back um, your digestive system and microbiome of you know being where it actually needs to be. So I cut a lot of those protein bars out. I was adding in more whole foods, uh, more plant-based sources for carbs, and I was eating more beans, even though I didn't want to. I also dropped more of the red meat choices that I had in my diet and started focusing on more of like the fatty fish. So how long after you started making these food choices did you really notice a change? change. Oh, in about three or four weeks. Like it was really quick. I mean, but these were food choices that I was making in addition to using the the biome products. So I was implementing the prebiotic and then the superfoods greens. But, you know, I thought, okay, I got to make these changes and it may take me eight weeks or three months. I mean, it was three to four weeks and I was experiencing um, a huge reduction in the symptoms. And then also you were putting so much stress on your body. There was the stress of competition. There was weight loss. There was diet stress, even from eating lower carb. So how big of a role did stress management play in the alleviation of these symptoms, too? Oh, my gosh, a lot. Yeah. So when I got the report, you know, I was expecting, okay, I need to change these things with my foods. I need to take these supplements. But then I was like, wait a minute. There are some um, non-nutritional things here that I need to change, and stress management was one because I was experiencing – Um, adrenal fatigue. I was having a hard time, you know, bearing the workload of having a global online business and being a mom of two kids and a wife. And then I realized that I was taking on a lot, trying to be Wonder Woman and that, you know, stress was another thing that was damaging my second brain, which is my gut. And what kind of tools did you use to reduce that stress to make you breathe a little more just to (laughs) calm your nervous system down? So I ended up doing one of the breathing patterns, what which was you know given to me as a recommendation after getting my gut report back. I started investing in time, like going to get a pedicure, having 30 minutes of the day where I focused on myself, reading podcasts, just relaxing, and then putting less you know things on my plate. So where I could hire um, an assistant to do small tasks for me, or even if it was just like graphic design for like a nutrition ebook, you know I was basically, you know, taking some of the things off of my plate where I could reduce the stress and add better quality um, of life to, you know, my current workload. So the stress management paired with the changes to the diet, 
really helped you to overcome some of those gut issues that you were dealing with. And today, how are you feeling? Oh my God, so much better. Uh, like a whole new life. Like when I was having those symptoms, I was crying at night because I would look in the mirror and you know how everybody wakes up in the morning and they're like, you know, that's when I'm the leanest. I look the best. They're like checking their stomach. I was waking up looking five months pregnant and I was extremely bloated. And, you know, here I was post-competition having abs all the time. You know, I did not feel my best and it was depressing, especially being a public figure. And here I am. I didn't have the answers to what was going on. And now I felt like I was taking control of my gut health again. So what advice would you have for someone who maybe is in that same position, who is cutting weight, they look good, but they're still not feeling great. So a lot of times people are so focused on the aesthetics that they don't realize what they're doing internally to their bodies to get, you know, that desired look. So one, you have to ask yourself, you know, is it worth it? And then, you know, two, what can you be doing for your gut health to basically, um, you know, make sure everything on the inside is, you know, running like it should. So major recommendations that I have is if you're experiencing some of these issues, one, you know, get the gut report done, check it out, see what's going on, see where you're starting, and then start making some simple changes. And those can be implementing a probiotic like biomes into your daily regimen, getting the prebiotic in there. So you basically have the food for the, you know, probiotic to work as effectively as it should. And then eating fermented foods, make sure you're eating healthy fats, complex carbs, getting activity, reducing your stress management. Like these are things that are like basic healthy things that most people should be doing, but they forget about it when they're really just driving after that aesthetic look of being lean. Eve, thank you so much for coming on the show. If people want to keep in touch with you, hear what you're up to, hear more about gut health and everything else you have Mm -hmm. going on, where can they find you? So um, the number one place you can find me is Instagram. That's like my favorite platform. I'm on there every single day. Um, My Instagram handle is at Eve underscore fit chick. And then you can also find me on my website at gtransformationfitness.com. Great. And we will link to all of that in the show notes. Thanks so much for coming on. We'll talk soon. No problem. Thanks guys. As always, thank you so much for listening. Visit biomehealth.com to check out the show notes and more information about this episode. And don't forget, enter biome10 at checkout to receive 10% off any biome purchase. I'm Andrea Ween, and we'll see you next week. 